Now, I don't want to photograph the way other people tend to do on Safari. I don't want to use a big telephoto lens. This means I have to get close, dangerously close, to some dangerous animals. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my favorite wildlife photographs from my East Africa trip and do a breakdown to explain how I got them. So first, let me set the context. This is my first trip ever to East Africa. So I'm going to Kenya for the Great Migration, as well as to Uganda for its primates. Before I went on this trip, I already had some images in mind. I already envisioned some of these photographs that I wanted to take. I knew that I did not want to compete with other people and other vehicles only to get the exact same shots. I knew that I wanted something different. So here's what I had in mind. I wanted my photographs to fulfill these conditions, ideally of course. It preferably has to be shot in dramatic light or golden light. I don't like any of those clear blue skies and I certainly don't like the harshness of the afternoon sun. I also wanted to shoot lower than the eye level of the animal to make the animal look more powerful and majestic. This meant that being on safari in Kenya, I had to drop my hands out of the vehicle, get my camera lower to the floor instead of keeping my hands inside the safety of the vehicle. I also wanted to showcase the animal in its habitat as much as possible, which meant that I did not want any of those close-up portraits that looked like they could have been taken in the zoo. And the last one, which is probably the most difficult one, is to use a wide-angle lens as much as possible, while still having the animal being large in the frame. This meant that I had to get really close to the animal. Let's first start in Kenya. With Kenyan safaris, the way it works is that guides will tend to communicate with each other via radio to inform each other about various interesting sightings like kills or chases and hunts. So, when something interesting is spotted, all the vehicles will make a run for it and you'll end up with 30 or 40 different vehicles around a cheetah or a lion, which was not ideal for me. I wanted something a little bit more private, a more private experience. So my guide turned off his radio and we went to look for animals on our own, where I knew that there would be no one to block my shot. The first photo that I want to talk about is of this African elephant here in Kenya. And this was shot around 40 millimeters. What happened was that we were driving through the Mara Reserve and I noticed this god rays coming down through the clouds and I thought to myself, it would be super nice if I could get a large animal standing below these god rays. We managed to find a herd of elephants but they were kind of disorganized and scattered about and I did not want to have a photo of a uh, disorganized herd of elephants so I knew I had to single one out. As the elephant group was walking in one direction, I got the vehicle to move forward to a position where I think the elephant group might head to and we waited over there. And so thankfully one of the elephants did eventually stop in front of our vehicle, maybe about 10 meters or so in front of us and that's how I got this shot. Unfortunately, I think that the elephant might have thought that we were a little bit too close for comfort and it started taking these big strides towards us and you can actually see that I still fired off my camera and got some photographs of it charging towards us um, but of course I was panicking and the horizon level is all off but nevertheless, it was still a fantastic encounter. The next photo is that of a giraffe. My initial idea was to have a photograph of a lone giraffe running off into the sunset while we were chasing it from the back. That was my ideal scenario, of course. So we noticed this group of giraffes as they were feeding and we basically inched our vehicle slowly closer towards them so that they would take the time and get used to our presence. Eventually, we did get to a point where we were close enough to this one individual giraffe and I thought that if we turn on the engine of the vehicle, it might become startled and run away but actually it was pretty casual about it and just started to walk off. So this photograph was shot at 35mm where the giraffe was maybe 5 to 8 meters away from us. So although I did not get the giraffe running or the sunset, I think the dramatic skies and the wide angle photo still made for a pretty strong and good image. The third photo is another wide angle photo, this time of a male lion. So one of the mornings we were out scouting for animals to photograph when we chanced upon these two male lions just walking down a very gentle hill. So the image that I had in mind was to have these two lions coming towards my camera, close to my camera and looking directly into my lens. So that meant that we had to maneuver our vehicle to in front of the path of these lions when they were walking. 
Now, the first two tries were unsuccessful. As soon as the vehicle stopped moving, the lions actually changed directions, moved away, which meant that I could not get close enough to the lions. I had my hand out of the vehicle, close to the ground, photographing at 35 millimeters. The lion was maybe just only about two or three meters away from me, and when it produced a low growl, you can actually feel it reverberating through um, my body. And that was definitely a very interesting and exciting encounter for me. So for this final photo, the skies were clear blue, the lion wasn't looking directly into my lens, which all weren't to my liking, but I suppose the pretty interesting backstory and, and the proximity to such a, an awesome predator definitely made this photograph memorable for me. Next, we move on to two of my favourite shots in Uganda. Now I love primates and it's always been my dream to see the great apes in the world. So of course, when we arrived in Uganda, one of the things of, for my bucket list was to go and visit the mountain gorillas in Buindi um, impenetrable forest. With apes here in Uganda, there is no such thing as the safety of the vehicle. You have to trek through some very dense jungle with the possibility that you are able to be close to these apes. And that's exactly what happened. After about an hour to an hour and a half of trekking, we got to a family of mountain gorillas, where I immediately noticed this massive silverback gorilla. Now, the shot that I had in mind was a portrait of this beautiful, majestic silverback gorilla looking directly into my camera, where you can see its forest surroundings. However, that day, the silverback gorilla had no interest in being photogenic and unfortunately, I could not get my shot. But on the bright side, a younger gorilla did slowly inch its way towards me to try to feed on some plants that were closer to me. So I just waited there silently with uh, the same 35mm lens that I use until it finally got close enough, stared into my lens and I clicked that shutter button. So this is the shot I got, shot at 35mm with the gorilla being just about 2 meters away from me. The last photo is the one I love the most. Here we are at Kibale National Park in Uganda to look for wild chimpanzees, which is another great aid for me to take off my bucket list. Now, chimpanzees are generally considered to be dangerous animals, and so it is definitely not recommended to be that close to them. But my plan was for the chimpanzees to come towards me instead of me going towards them, which meant that I had to try to plan ahead and predict the path of these chimpanzees. So we came across this chimpanzee that was eating on the forest floor, and every couple of minutes or so, it would start to move through the forest floor down to another spot. And every single time I would try to um, catch it while it's moving, but to no avail. Finally, on the last occasion, I placed myself away from all the other visitors and put myself right beside the forest trail where I think it would move ahead next. When everybody else was getting beautiful portraits of this chimpanzee from a distance away, I was at another site, hoping that the chimp would start to walk towards me. Here, I am kneeling on the floor, and my camera is low to the ground with a 35mm lens in hand. After some waiting and with a massive stroke of luck, it did actually turn and come towards me and stared at my camera as it walked past. So this was the shot that I envisioned and I actually got it. So I'm really quite proud of that. So these are my top 5 images from my East Africa trip and you'll notice that none of them were shot on a long telephoto lens. Let me know which one of these photos are your favourite down in the comment section below.